Hey everyone, my name is Andy and my channel is Finding Value. Uh, so we're looking in the depths at Finding Value and there's something I want to go over um, because a lot of these stocks that you know, I'm recommending and we're looking at uh, are not super large stocks uh, in terms of volume. Whenever you're at bottoms, they're pretty illiquid. And there's a couple of things I want you to understand when you go to buy some of these uh, stocks if you're deciding to buy them. So I created a, a presentation on investing in commodities at, at a bottom. So we'll pop right in here and see what this is. So uh, you always want to use limit buy orders for small companies. Uh, a limit buy order is where you put a buy order in, you put limit order, and you put a price next to that limit order. Uh, then it that forces whoever's the market maker there uh, or the two brokers that are dealing together it forces them to use that as the highest share price that you can accumulate the shares. You don't want to put in an order, a market order, and then all of a sudden it fills you in some crazy amount higher, like 10%. So uh, you don't want to do that. Uh, also, uh, you want to do, uh, you'll see a bid and an ask. The bid is what a, a, a person is bidding for the stock and an ask is what someone is asking for it. Sometimes you get a spread between the two, uh, and sometimes you want to put a limit order between the bid and ask, and sometimes it fills, uh, or the stock moves up and down into your limit order. Uh, and you know sometimes small stocks have huge spreads between the two, but between the bid and the ask, uh, and sometimes it's, it's difficult to put to know what limit order to put in there, and that's just dealing with small illiquid stocks at the bottom. Uh, at the peak, when they're peaking up, it's going to be very easy uh, to sell it because it's going to be pretty liquid. It's going to be a much larger uh, company at that at that point, and a lot of people are going to be buying it at the top. All those retail sellers come rushing in to buy it. Uh, commodity companies. So the most important part of of any of these companies is the price of the commodity. It's not margins. Uh, it's not debt. Now it depends on how big the debt is. Sometimes having some debt is good because if they acquire a lot of assets in a very low interest rate environment that's a good thing you want them to acquire debt when debt is cheap and everything is depressed you want to look at the assets you want to look at that debt and you want to look at the free cash flow and the ability to service that debt there's some ratios that you might be looking at you know in terms of of, of cash flow ratios sometimes the chart tells you what the market thinks. And you can use this as confluence, confluence everything merging together. Uh, let's say the, the balance sheet looks good and the chart looks good. The, the money who's buying behind that chart thinks it's good as well. You know, and if trained, you can see smart money buying through a chart, technically almost. You can see that volume step in. You can see um, a company is going to survive. Uh, dead companies, you're not going to see anybody come in really. Uh, a trading strategy. So you got to do your homework and be the greatest contrarian you can be. And a contrarian is just doing opposite of everyone else. Uh, sometimes the companies that are most avoided, say debt, uh, but you find something that's unique about them. You find out that something's not that bad. So let's say they have debt but acquired $1 billion in assets for $100 million, uh, in debt in a down market and did so with low interest rates. The value of the company is at 180 million market cap. They have assets valued at PV10, that's, that's an oil valuation of three to four billion, but, ha but they have debt and everyone's avoiding them. Nobody wants to buy them. But you look at the debt and they can easily service it. They hedge their production. It, some of these are just absolutely fantastic steals of a deal out there when you start looking into them. Sometimes they can access more debt too and are backed by private placements from billionaires. You wanna, you wanna find those, those companies. Uh, usually highly leveraged companies attract a lot of short sellers. You wanna rely on technical analysis to catch the bottom and enjoy the ride higher. Short sellers, they all pile in some of these stocks sometimes. Then when the buyers come in, you have buying power from the buyers and then you have buying power from the short sellers needing to, to close their short positions. 
and the, the stock just rockets higher. Just absolute insane moves uh, over periods of time if you're really close to a bottom. You might see 10, 20% days, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of them in a row. And you're just like, wow, this is insane. Uh, and then, yeah, they hedge their production to assure costs are covered over two years or something like that if it's an oil or natural gas company. Uh, a contrarian within contrarians. So sometimes you think of strategies that others might not think of. You know, be a contrarian within contrarians. So I'm going to give an example here. In uranium, uranium has a, a, a group of companies. And those uranium companies, the contrarians all have their, their, their favorites and they all have their hated ones. And a lot, of, a lot of the people just go with what the, the flow is. Even though they're contrarian and they think, yeah, that's gonna do well, they just do whatever's recommended to them. They'll say, okay, deep yellow, they had, it was x paladin energy, I'm just gonna buy that, which is fine. You know, and a lot of people are gonna recommend that. Now, here's, here's a company that I see, Bannerman Resources. The assets are dirt cheap, management is great but they have high operating costs. You know, it's, it's expensive to get this stuff out of the ground. Now, if this bull market is as big as we think it is, and all our nuclear uh, people who watch this channel, if we think nuclear is gonna go way up, no one likes Bannerman Resources. Their assets are dirt cheap. Maybe that's the contrarian bet amongst all of us contrarians who like uranium. Maybe that's the best bet to have. Because if no one's in it, if, if everyone doesn't like Bannerman Resources, I mean, the stock's down then. I bought Bannerman Resources. I didn't buy a huge stake, but I bought into Bannerman as an ultra, ultra contrarian play. I think nuclear is going to go up very fast. In, when, once it starts moving, it'll go up very quickly in less than two years. Uh, not maybe from this point, but when it starts to move, it'll be a two-year window where it just it's going to go pretty pretty fast. Uh, I think Bannerman, when you come to the plate last, there might be a whole bunch of of utility companies saying, "Hey, look, we need your res we we need your, your uranium." Everyone else locked in at lower prices. You're the only one left. What do you want for it? Hundred dollars? Two two hundred dollars? I don't know. We'll see. They also can get their uh, their production back. At, uh, they can get their production online in probably about three years or so. So three years is very quickly. And the price is going to be, it could be very, very high. They could, be, they could make a killing if they, if they could play this right, in my opinion. The contrarian crowd is contrarian only to a certain extent. No one is buying this company but me, it seems like. Uh, they could be the best performing company in the next bull market because of its valuation and sentiment towards that company. And then I wrote, or perhaps not. We don't know. But usually if you do opposite of everyone else, sometimes that works out very, very well. Here's something else. I have be aggressive. Once you know the valuations of a sector, be aggressive as hell when no one else is. Don't be buying and trying to chase the stocks higher. Buy them when they're down, look at the charts, and I'll teach you guys how to do technical analysis over those market updates. I'll continue to describe what I see. But buy it when everyone's waiting at the front door and ready to run out the front door. Don't buy it when they're already running. You wanna, you wanna wait, you wanna get it low, and, and you want to get it before that move really starts to go. Stocks give you signs when buyers equal sellers. It's like a group of buyers are all outside a store during Black Friday. They are waiting for the door to open so they can all run out, and that's the bulls. Buy before the bulls take off. People naturally chase price. They, look, they chase noises, sounds, lights. They, like, they, they, they go and see shiny things. Oh, that's shiny, let's go look at it. Buy a position at the bottom and wait. Buy a second time right when you see strength. Buy into strength. So when you, when you look at the charts, and here's one here, it's SM Energy, and I did this today. It's coming down, and I kind of like it down here. I, I, I'm seeing all these other natural gas companies go higher. 
uh, RRC, SWN, CNX, they're all pulling higher. Uh, MCF today as well, uh, Contango Energy. They, they're, they're down and I'm seeing these wonderful little patterns. This is a bullish piercing, big up day, and then you get the small down days in, inside. And I, I said I was buying 150 right here, and that's what I did. We got this nice big move. Now, this thing's got a, it, and here's something important too. See how it closed and it, it was a, a top like this? Nice, strong closing. We'll probably see a continuation of it tomorrow. That's my guess. And obviously I don't have crystal ball, but usually if you get a nice close high, it'll continue higher. I mean, usually if you have just teeny wicks or, or closes right at the top, it's usually a pattern going higher. If you see wicks at the top, like this one, it goes lower. Wick at the bottom, it's a reversal to go higher. Wick at the top, reversal to go the other way. Wick at the bottom, reversal to go up. See that? This, is, this looks pretty good, but I'm trying to catch the bottom of a bottom here. Also, uh, passion. You, you, want, you want to win at this unless, you're not going to win at this unless you're passionate. And you should have listened to many of my videos because the content I have is insane compared to other channels. If you're passionate about this stuff, you would have already watched probably three, four, five. You'll just keep watching my videos because there's a lot of stuff in there that you're curious about that you may get answers. And even if you watch one video and you only get one or two things out of it, it's still worth it. I'm giving you underhand lobs for, pe for people to hit out of the park here and some of my picks. I mean, you just, I'm just throwing them out there, underhand lobs. You can hit them out of the park if you want. Passion is what drives you. And when you are passionate about something, you will think about it all the time. Your brain will even work problems and solve them in your sleep. And that's what's so negative about people who video game and think about video games all the time. It literally steals their brain power. And, and man, it hurts them in the long run. This is the type of dedication that is needed to be better than everyone else. Is you gotta have that passion, you gotta be thinking about it and learning about it uh, all the time until you become very good. And also, listen to your mentor. Always listen to your mentor. And, and th that could be me, that is me, right? No, serious, that, yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's all I've got. So, you know, Go in there, be a contrarian, buy some of these companies up, and have a fun. You know, have fun doing it. You know, try to catch a bottom, hold on. Uh, I think a lot of these companies, they're looking really good, and I think we're going to go higher on, on a lot of these picks I'm putting in front of you. So, uh, subscribe, comment, and have a nice day.